Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And of course, a very happy new year to you all. Welcome to this service for today, Sunday the 3rd of January 2021. It's great to welcome you to worship God with us wherever you are. In our service today, we will be celebrating Epiphany, the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus, as we continue to celebrate that very special birth in Bethlehem. So let us pray. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us remember his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Amen. Our first hymn this morning tells the story of the Epiphany, the visit of the three kings to baby Jesus, and it gives us some clues about the presents they brought him. If you have a crib scene like mine, you might like to help your three kings to travel to the manger now as we sing, We Three Kings of Orient Are. grace of God has dawned upon the world through the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. 
let us confess our sins. We say together, God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and baptise us once again with your spirit, that, forgiven and renewed, we may show forth your glory, shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. May Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's have a short moment of quiet for our own thoughts and prayers before we pray together the Collect, the special prayer for this Sunday. Let us pray. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Even though our celebrations have been muted this Christmas, if you had children in the house or in the garden or on Zoom, you'll no doubt have heard and seen excited opening of presents and you will have given and received them yourself too. I wonder what your most exciting present was. Here's mine. It's a Marmite scoop. It's specially designed to get the last bit of Marmite out of the jar. Jesus certainly had some interesting presents as we heard in today's gospel reading. No Marmite scoop or chocolate or games console or anything like that for him. 
You'll probably know that it's only in the Gospel of Matthew that we hear this story of the three kings and their gifts. Like many of our traditional images of Christmas, most of what we think about them is sourced from paintings, songs and the oral tradition, rather than anything specified in scripture. All that the Greek of the text tells us is that there were magi, wise men, who came from the east after Jesus' birth. We get our English word magic from this same Greek root, but to a first century audience, the implication would have been that these were scholarly priests who studied the stars and who were guided by what they saw in the sky, thus linking them with the star at its rising, which they would follow to find the baby Jesus. The reason we sometimes call them kings is probably down to the need to make a link between the New Testament and the prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures about the kind of person the coming Messiah would be. Isaiah speaks of the coming of a king whose glory will appear over his people, whose coming will bring light and dawning to his people, and who will be given gifts of frankincense and gold from all those who come from Sheba. In the book of Psalms, we hear of Sheba too, the place from where kings will bring gifts to the needy and the king who will come to crush the oppressor, help the needy and provide justice for the poor. Of course, there's symbolism behind the presents that the wise men bring. We know that the present of gold was to signify that the baby was important because gold has always been valuable. Kings wear gold crowns. It's a timeless way to indicate wealth. Frankincense and myrrh, however, are a bit less obvious to us. We don't really have a tradition of using incense in our services, but you'll be familiar with the psalm that speaks of our prayers rising up like incense, and that's what it was and is used for, to symbolise our prayers rising up to God in sweet-smelling clouds. Think of the kingdom of heaven, where all our prayers are gathered together before our heavenly Father, at whose feet we stand. I've got an incense burner scented with frankincense here, and it is a very delicate fragrance. It's from the sap of the tree Boswellia sacra. Myrrh, the third gift, is understood as being given to Jesus as a foretaste of his death, when his body would be embalmed. These wise men knew their stuff, and the implication is, of course, that although we see a tiny baby, we know the importance of that baby, who will eventually defeat death and release us from its power. So the wise men, number unspecified, bring their gifts to baby Jesus at a time after his birth, which in the Western Church we celebrate as Epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas, the 6th of January, or in many Anglican churches like ours, we transfer it to this Sunday, the first Sunday in January. There are lots of traditions in other countries about Epiphany, many of which involve present giving, children leaving out their shoes to be filled with gifts, or if they've been naughty, a lump of coal. The tradition that most people in this country remember is that you take down your Christmas tree, otherwise it's bad luck. We've strayed quite a long way from the real meaning of Epiphany and Christmas. In the Church of England, Epiphany is a point within the Christmas season. We carry on using our Christmas season service book until Candlemas, or the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, at the beginning of February. Christmas starts with baby Jesus, but it doesn't end when the secular world tells us to take down our decorations. Some people leave their decorations up until Candlemas, certainly their crib scenes, and that reminds us that Christmas isn't just about the birth of a baby on one day. The Greek derivation of the word epiphany echoes that idea. The verb epiphanein combines the prefix epi, meaning on, and the verb phanein, meaning to show forth. It's a declaration, it's a distinct statement about something. So the idea I'd like you to take away is that Jesus is being manifested through the world because of the visit of the wise men. And we can use that idea of epiphany to show that Jesus is in our lives, shining forth to others, visible in what we do and say, 
marking us out as a people with a purpose, with a gospel to proclaim. We are to be servants of the gospel, illuminating the boundless richness of Christ and witnessing to the rich variety of the wisdom of God. We are here to show everyone that God has a plan, his eternal purpose in Christ Jesus, not just a mystery hidden and revealed only to the select few, but by the gift of God's grace available to all. That's the best present any of us could ever hope to receive. And we don't need an Amazon wish list or a letter to Father Christmas to get it. We need to do nothing but respond in love to God's gracious gift of Jesus. The most important Christmas present of all time. Truly the gift that keeps on giving year after year once the dusty decorations have been taken down and the shops have started to sell Easter eggs. Amen. Greetings from Persian hands of hearts to Jordan follow the pointing star and this the quest of the travellers Let us now declare our faith in the God who loves us and who is with us always. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to sing a familiar Epiphany hymn, which encourages us to be led to God, just as the wise men were guided to the infant Jesus by a star. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold.
you might like to light a candle now, thinking of Jesus, the light of the world, and the wise men's journey towards that light as we pray together. Let us worship the Father and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. The Magi came from the East to worship your Son. Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds at the beginning of this year. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Father, grant an abundance of peace to your world. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived in the exile and the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our neighbours, our families and this community of which we are a part. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the Magi, the Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph and all the faithful departed. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now bring all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn brings together some of the themes of our service, reminding us that we are still in the Christmas season of comfort and joy, where our own gift of love and service to God is the best present that we can give him. Brightest and best are the sons of the morning.
We've come to the end of our service, so let's pray together. Lord God, the bright splendour whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.